Welcome to Off the Rails, Right versus Left. We do this show because the left is evil. I'm Rob B. With me, as always, is Brad Lee. And then, of course, we also have our resident uh, uh, Catholic leftist sympathizer because uh, for some reason he still actually thinks the left is human, but here he is. Brian G., leftist sympathizer. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that's good. We yeah, can all take a joke. Yeah. <laughs> to, to be clear, uh, um, Brian thinks they're crazy too. He just thinks they're human, whereas uh, Brad, uh, Brian, uh, Brad, and I pretty much think that they're um, it, it, evil. Just well, just yeah. Evil. I, I'm yeah, I, think that I, I I tend to think that uh, there are some le evil leftists out there. There are evil right on the right too, but I tend to think that most leftists are trying to do what they think is best, what they think is right. They're just wrong. <laughs> yeah. oh, did you see the latest Alex Stein video? Uh-uh. Oh, man, he got spit on, and he went to Penn State, and the leftists were, like, evil. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much yeah. them. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's funny how they they say that everyone else is uh, they try and claim that the right is fascist and yet anytime a conservative speaker goes to a college campus, they act like a bunch of Nazi brown shirts and shut it down, shut it down with physical attacks and violence and trying to silence the opposition. So um, now any. Uh, Interesting uh, news items that you guys have seen the last few days you want to mention? Because I got a couple good ones that I saw. Well, yeah, here, let me <laughs> let me bring that, that video up that I was telling you about. <laughs> hold, on, just, uh, hold on a second. Which one? Because we've discussed several videos. <laughs> no, the one that I was just talking about. The Alex Stein. Uh So while you're pulling that up, um, yeah, I spent some time watching the uh, the Fetterman debate. <laughs> the Fetterman debate. Oh my god! Wasn't that just cringy? Oh my! Like, no, I I, I would say that I feel bad for uh, Fetterman, but he's not a human being, so I don't feel bad for him. Why would you feel bad? Why, why would you feel bad for him? His uh, campaign people are the ones that put him up to it. Well, I guess well, you could. You could feel bad for him in that aspect that he shouldn't have been up there. That and God warned him. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he tried to make God tried to make his brain explode, and he still didn't take the hit. And that's funny because that wasn't the only debate, but that was like the most watched one, I think, because you had Kathy Hochul, and uh, you also had uh, Gret Gretchen Whitmer. Both of them were debating in their respective uh, states. Yeah, and they both did horribly, right? Yeah, the Zeldin just wiped the floor with. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, it's not too hard when you live in the worst performing state to uh, debate the person currently leading it. Yeah, it's not really hard. You just say, "Ah, would you like my debate points?" Look out the window. <laughs> right. All right. So here's that video. You barely hear it. Oh, that's because I fucking. Dude's got some balls, man. Fuck you, you Jew hater! Get the fuck off, you Jew hater! You're a fucking Jew hater! That doesn't make you not a Jew hater! That's a fucking Jew hater! Left in the room, right? Thank you. 
these good good intentioned uh leftists gets better he gets spit on and he tells the girl that uh she's lucky he likes that fetish <laughs> oh lovely oh, wow yeah, yeah. It's, it's hilarious man so anyways so, obviously so that gonna... was like 15 minutes long so i'm uh, i'm not gonna play yeah. that, but <laughs> you could have stopped after a minute it was already annoying but yeah that's uh. actually kind of that's actually right along the the point of uh uh, leftists, they don't have anything to say, so they just try and shout and make accusations, but they don't actually have any point to make. No, yeah, and that they don't want to. Their whole thing, and they succeeded, was they were trying to get that event shut down. She was there speaking with uh, someone else, too. They were supposed to have, yeah, but, a, have an event. I, I mean, uh, oh god, what is that girl's name? Um, I mean, this stuff's been happening forever. Um, well, how about the uh, the Russian accusations, the false flag uh, they're trying to build up, uh, saying that the UK and the US are uh, helping the U the uh, Ukraine build a dirty bomb to use against them. I wouldn't put it past them, but I wouldn't put it past Russia to lie about it either. So, well, but you know, Russia says this stuff all the time, so they can use one. Or they, well, a lot they, of they, stuff the that slide, they they drop one, say that you can't Ukraine did it, and then they can use it for, say, well, we're taking the next step, we're using a tactical nuke. Well, a lot of stuff that Russia accuses us of comes true as well. Not all of it, but some of it does, and it has. So, yeah. I mean, it's just hard. It's hard to decipher our propaganda and Russia's propaganda, right? Like, they said that the Hunter laptop was Russian propaganda, and we know that it was, that it's not. I mean, 
But then well, again, I don't think no, Russia. I, I don't think Russia came out and said no. That's not Russian propaganda. But but yeah, I, I mean, bro. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't, it's it's stupid. It's all stupid. Fact of the matter is, this should have never. It should have never gotten this far. Yeah. But I mean, they've been doing this stuff forever. I mean, look at what they do to Mayo, uh, to Mayo Yiannopoulos. Like, I mean, the guy's a dirtbag. I don't like him. Yeah. But they've been doing this to him forever. Um, they do it to Ben Shapiro. They do it to Charlie Kirk. Like, oh, look, look what they're uh, look what the families of the Parkland shooter are doing to uh, Alex Jones. They're yeah. trying to get him for two point five trillion dollars. That's yeah. almost that's almost uh the United States GDP in one year. Nobody has that. Anybody listen to the the speech of the new Italian prime minister? No, oh, which speech? The one where he talks about how he supports uh she? CBDCs or she? she. No, oh, oh I thought you were talking about the UK's new prime no, minister. Italian. Oh. Now yeah, that the, 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 the new the new uh, British Prime Minister is one hundred percent your normal leftist following his marching orders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean the the new Italian one down, uh, denounced fascism, which we expected because she's not a fascist, uh, and support talk, talked about her support for Ukraine and the importance mm -hmm. of that war. And for fiscal responsibility, not passing it on to the next generations. That's good. So far, I've liked her. Yeah, I think she's... Everything that she stands for, or says she stands for, has been pretty much spot on. It's exactly what we should be. Well, you got to make your country strong first, and then it goes out from there. I mean, if you're weak... Then what? You can... What? She stands for God, family, and country. You racist. Fascist. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of like, yeah, it's they're they're gonna attack anybody with that message because they're all global elitist assholes from the WEF. This guy that just got uh, wait, uh, she's a she's a she's a mega fast fascist, right? Make Italy yeah. great again. <laughs> yeah, mega. Um, she's um of the uh, or he the the this. Immigrant dude that just became the prime minister. Thank God we can't have immigrants as president here. Um, talk about your Manchurian candidacy. Oh, um, the uh, one that just got appointed in uh, England. This is an immigrant that's a full graduate from the WEF school of screw your country for the global elitists. Right. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, I mean that's pretty much the news everywhere. Like, so what was the what was the the few topics that you had that you you had read about? Well, I was just I I, I kind of was looking at some of the same news news points, but kind of like with the con the historical context, like you talked about uh, the Russia U.S. thing now in uh, Syria. Russia warned that the bad guys were getting ready to do uh, a chemical weapons attack. And then they did a chemical weapons attack. And then they clearly did the chemical weapons attack because it hit the opposing territory. Like, you don't, if, if, if you're in a, like, they had nothing to gain by it. Like, um, yeah, it was the third chemical weapons attack. It wasn't going to pull the U.S. in. Like, you could have argued that that's what they were looking for. But like that, the biggest attack that happened in Syria was obviously against the opposition and clearly done by Russia. So what I think is what I think will be interesting if there is actually a dirty bomb used there is uh, I'm willing to bet that it's going to come up as a nuclear material that's not traceable because all the nuclear powers and all the countries that uh, produce uh, nuclear energy for or uh, 
nuclear material for nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. Um, the radioisotope signature of their nuclear material is on record. Mm -hmm. two yeah, countries the countries don't have a good, the two countries we don't have a good record of Iran. are Iran and North Korea. Hmm. Both buddies of Russia. So yep. won't it be funny when because if Russia uses their own material, we'll be able to go like the whole world will be able to see it, including their allies, and be like, that came from this plant in this in Russia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the yeah, in this exact tank. <laughs> now, um, I I think the quote dirty bomb that's getting ready to be used. I think um I think Russia's getting ready to actually set up this uh, uh or blow up the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Well they just they just set sail another submarine from what I saw on MSN. Yeah, but I I, I think they're just getting ready to blow, blow up the power plant. That's what I think they're getting ready to do. Yeah. They're gonna call oh, yeah, it dirty. Dirty bomb. Winter's coming, man. They can't be having Europe have energy. Yeah. So, but that, that I mean, that's 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 the one that I see coming. Um, as far as far as the uh, the elections, um, yeah, I I still haven't haven't seen the air. I still want to see a debate down in Arizona. What, what's her name? That's not going to happen. Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake. Uh, that's yeah, not. Lake. Katie Hobbs is straight up came out and said she's not going to do it. Yeah, she, said, well, she says that probably... Carrie Lake is a bad faith actor. And yet, and yet, uh, it's clear in all these debates that are actually happening when they finally give, you know, the voters what they want, which is a debate. What happens? The Democrats go down because they're like they have nothing to offer. Nothing. They're incompetent, or the the conservatives and Republicans show them the platform that they're running on, and that platform is not good. They exactly, have, they have no success. So, um. So that, I mean, like tracking that, like I thought Herschel Walker did great in his debate. I thought uh, Nimit Oz was okay. He was like, pretty good. Not, I yeah, gotta the tell guy's you. Not, the guy's not a politician. So I thought he debated pretty well for someone who's not a politician and not well, a debater. It sounded great as you expect from a TV guy. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, some of the well, stuff, I I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Oz, but I mean, I watched the whole debate last night. But like I said, I I caught it while on another uh, another podcast, and they were kind of talking over the the debaters at times, which kind of pissed me off because I wanted to hear what Oz had to say and what Fetterman was trying to say. But yeah, the, you know, I'm not a fan of Oz, but I could understand his points and <coughs> kind of, could, could mostly agree with him. So, I mean. If I if I was in Pennsylvania, I would be I'd be more inclined to vote for Oz than Fetterman. But Fetterman just when you start off your debate by saying hi and good night, there's a there's a problem there. You're, just, yeah. you're saying hello and goodbye at the same time. Like I know that he was probably trying to say good evening, but he said good night. And now good here's what I here's what I could not catch because it, it's very coincidental that they never showed the moderators while Fetterman was speaking. I wanted to see if the words that he was saying were was on the screen before or after he said them. Right. That's that, so. Well, they don't want to show if he's reading his answers. They want, I mean, they're letting yeah. know that he's reading the questions, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah, even, even, if he, what, even if he was reading, his, reading the answers, his answers made no sense. Well, if he was, but the point is, if he was reading the answers, they weren't his answers anyways. Yeah. And then his his uh, speech uh, processing would be so bad that even with the answers given and given to him, he still can't give the answers. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, but no. So as far as far as Nim and Oz, I was actually like disappointed about like how he performed i expect him to perform better as being a television personality mm -hmm. but then again the guy's education he was a doctor which like, i didn't i didn't see much of it i just saw a couple little highlights on on some pod on some casts you so, know they didn't uh, give him they didn't give him a whole lot of time to answer either 60 seconds is not a long time 
And that was the most time that they had to get for anything. And 15 seconds for a rebuttal. I'm like, what? But but what I will say is they did hold the line on the rules on both sides. Yes, they did. They were the first. That's the first debate I've seen in probably 15 years where the conservative candidate was treated the same as the liberal. Right. Or like, or I mean, vice it, versa. Yeah. The the one thing that these debaters need to do, though, is when it, when somebody like they need to do it across the board. But uh, when somebody just doesn't answer the question, like they gave, the they, gave, they gave they gave they gave they did it to Federbrand Oz sidestep too. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's the thing, like. um, Oz, he made clear he's OK with first trimester abortions. Whether yeah. you agree with that or not, he made it clear clear that that was his point. But, but he, he also not- he also made it clear that it, he doesn't want the federal government involved in abortions and yeah. it needs to go to the state. He made it very exactly. clear that he supports the states the states' rights on the abortion, allowing the legislation. Yeah, and see, to- and, and and that's what I was that's what I was talking about about how like Oz performed in the debates. That's like I I, I didn't like the way he answered that question, like. I mean, it's funny. He's not a politician, but he sure sounded like one when he's sitting there, like giving this long roundabout story when he could have just said, um, yeah, I'm not going to vote on anything that takes the power away from the states to decide. Right. That's yeah. like all he can say. And said he like makes this big old tell out of it and doesn't actually say this is how I will vote. He just, oh, I wouldn't support it. But I'm going to reach across the aisle. I'm going to work with people. Well, no, you're being asked your point on this position not who you're going to work with. And, um, and and he well, he did have some good points as far as uh the minimum wage and you know uh having companies, you know, take care of it themselves because you know uh Yeah, a, but, but a that's, comp- that's my point. When he did, that's actually my point. When he answers the question, you should have said, "No, I would not be for a minimum wage because I believe the market should set the wage." And currently, the market is pushing far in excess of fifteen dollars an hour in most spheres. And the spheres that it doesn't is because the people in those positions are non-productive people that aren't even able to produce seven dollars worth of goods per hour. Well, and maybe he said it in a longer way than that, but I mean, to me, it came across as as perfect. But Fetterman's was all. Every time he tried to give an answer to his to his plan or whatever, it was yeah, it was incoherent and broken up gibberish. It was like what? It was like somebody fucking go up there and fucking smack him. Oh, sorry, that sound is me debating you, Fetterman style. I know. I know. Oh, did you guys hear about that? Uh, there's a. It was like it, it was like watching it was like watching a Joe Biden speak. I think it was worse than that. There's that uh. A socialist representative in Washington State who were who had human feces thrown at her house at her door, and she called the cops. Mm-hmm. She called she called the cops to come and handle. She wanted cops out in front of her house twenty four seven, waiting for these people that fucking throw human feces at her door. Well, and she but she supports defunding the police. Yeah, but but well, I think that's funny. But you know, technically speaking, that's a biological attack because human waste is considered uh, a biohazard. So I'm just saying. I I, I get you, but uh... but I think the message that the people that did it were giving to her was, um, that "Lady, you're full of shit." Anyway, uh, <laughs> so no, uh, I mean, obviously, most of the news cycle right now is that. I mean. Like, I'm sure you guys didn't see that there was an earthquake here. There's another type oh, yeah. on the way here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all the all that you're going to get in the news cycle over there is the election. And I'm not getting as much of it because I'm over here. Um, I over over here, I got a we got a good uh, laugh over the first bill that Bong Bong Marco signed into law here is about registering SIM cards so they can try and stop scamming. So it took them. It took the scammers about two days to figure out how to wake, work around the new law. <laughs> a man has been but, throwing but, bags of human poop on the lawn of an elected official's house, and Seattle police say the suspect is still at large. Seattle <laughs> Seattle Council Member 
Pishama Sawant said a man has thrown bags of poop on her lawn several times over the last month, according to the statement from the Seattle Police Department. <laughs> I think she probably paid somebody to do it to uh, get attention. Well, she's a she's a socialist, and she yeah, supports she she does she them. supports defunding the police, and she called the police on these people. Yeah, they they have detectives. <laughs> They have detectives <laughs> investigating this shit. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. So the funny, th- the funny thing is, is I knew a gal who was uh, went to school to become a CSI, and she actually got it. You would not believe how often they end up having to like literally lab test human feces, mm-hmm. searching for funny. DNA in the event that they ever get a comparison to find out who's crapping on people's like porches, cars. It, it's not that uncommon. Oh, I'm not like, saying that it's uncommon. Yeah. I just think it's I just think it's funny. The especially, irony. Especially on the left hell coast. Um anyway, so today's topic, uh oh before we get into today's topic, I, I do want to say for uh all the revelers, thanks for joining us. Um, and some, I, somebody brought up that we didn't have any, uh, way to support our work over here. And so I did put it in our description on, uh, on YouTube and it's in the description on Spotify. Um, when I upload on rumble, I'm going to put it in the video description since I can't figure out an account description on there. I'm still learning rumble. Um, but yeah, we appreciate the people are not only like engaging, subscribing, watching, like, I, I mean, the numbers like compared to some of the shows out there are like probably pretty pathetic, but for us, it's pretty exciting because we're just guys talking about like, you know, what we care about. And so it's, uh, nice that we have so many people, uh, taking part. So if you haven't done it yet, make sure like subscribe, comment uh share us you know help us get the word out to other people hit that and, notification uh, bell so you get notified every time we put out new content and yeah comment even if you don't like what i have to say about my uh wife's cousin please feel free to comment <laughs> on the stupid stuff too so and then also um you can uh if you want to reach out to us directly you can send us an email at uh O T R R B L off the rails, right versus left. O T R R B L at Yahoo. Um, we'll get your direct message. So uh, if you think that we're all completely wrong, if you think we're all evil fascist <clears throat> conservatives, if you are one hundred percent liberal and you oppose our points of view, we invite you on to have a discussion. Or if you just want to join the show because you think it looks like we have a good time while we're like running our mouths, you're yeah. welcome to join. So we anyway, all have so, we all have thick skins, and we can take a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe 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 you don't want to join us. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, and you know what? We we do invite uh, trans activists, gay activists to come on, especially gay activists. I mean, you guys are great. You can take a dick, you can take a joke. Um, <laughs> uh, you guys are welcome to come on the show. We'd absolutely love to have you. Um, <clears throat> now, today's topic, uh, we're actually going to be talking about the 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 uh, upstream, down, midstream, and downstream pro- um, um, processes of the oil industry. Um, and, and the reason we're looking at this is because everybody is suffering from the inflation. Everybody's suffering from the high fuel prices. The fuel prices are about to go back up again, which is going to drive inflation even more. It's going to hyper-simulate inflation even more than the stupid spending because of all the steps in the process just to get fuel and then all the steps in the process to get the products that you need to live your life and that you want and that you deserve because you're a hardworking American and you should be able to get the things that you want and need for your family. Um, so we're going to, we're going to get into that. So uh, Brad, Brian, I, I, maybe, you know, a little bit more um, about the oil industry, Brian, because you did live in Alaska so long. Um but do you guys know the actual breakdowns for how fossil fuels are presented? Like, do you know what uh, upstream is? Do you know what midstream is? Do you know what downstream is? I'm pretty sure downstream is like uh, when it gets to me and like how my food is brought to me. 
Uh, <laughs> obviously, obviously, uh, the beginning would be the drilling and fracking, right? From yeah, drilling, I understand. Oil out of the ground, and then the transportation of the refineries. Yeah. Right, and then the refineries would be the mid middle of the stream. Yeah, and then exactly. get, and then getting it to the gas stations. Right. So now when we listen to Joe Biden talk about how these evil, <laughs> evil oil companies are um are uh gouging everybody, um here's what he's not actually covering. So a lot of the prices of oil is priced in on based on what future supply is expected to be there versus because they buy the they buy it with if you're a refiner, you're going to buy the oil like a month out, maybe two months, because it has to get to your refinery for you to make it. <laughs> so you need time to get it there. So you're buying it before you need it. So you're making um, so you're making an investment, correct? Yeah, you're absolutely. investing in the future of oil being supplied. So, yeah, if Biden comes out and says, we're going to end the fossil fuel industry what behooves someone into oh, he can, he can run invest no, 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 yeah, i'm saying but this, so people say that the president has no effect on gas prices going up but then when the gas prices go down he wants to take the credit for it but if he's saying that he's going to put an end to the fossil fuel industry what incentive does that give investors to invest in the fossil fuel industry to make the prices of the oil go down because it's supply and demand, right? Well, and that's exact. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're about to get into is he has hit all three phases of the oil pro production process. So okay, in, the first off. Okay, yeah, in the first, in the first phase, you've got your, uh, you got your uh, upstream, which is the uh, production. Okay. So when we get it, when we get into the production, you've got the buying of leases, which means you lease the land to use the oil rights on it to search for and extract oil. Then you have to drill test wells in areas that your geological experts, your geologists, your scientists think that there's likely to be oil. You have to run a test well uh, in this test well. It's about two inch drill that just goes down, 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 down and hopes that it hits some oil. Um, in fracking, uh, well, and then eventually, like if they find oil, then they're gonna go back with like, I want to say it's a 10 inch, uh, 10 inch drill. Well, the drill itself is about 12 inches. They drill a 12 inch hole. They put a 10 inch pipe that is a mile or two miles long down into the hole. Um, when it's in position to where it's almost through to the oil reserve pocket, then they fill the sides in with concrete so no oil can escape around the pipe, and then they break through. In fracking, they go down, and then they use new technology to drill sideways so they can get across because the shale oil, it's like shale is a rock that's really, really layered. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is like as it layers, it forms little pockets and there'll be natural gas and the oil caught in between the layers of uh, rock. And so they will literally draw a drill sideways because, of course, with the tectonic, tectonic upheaval, they're not all flat. Most of them are sitting at angles. So by going sideways, they're able to get across a bunch of pockets, which is what makes fracking uh, um, more useful now. The way they fill this, the way they fill this out, uh, or actually like accomplish the task to get the oil out to build up the pressure so it'll release is they pump uh, fracking fluid in there, which is ninety five percent water, um, five percent. Oh, I'm completely lost. Salts, I think it is, and then there's some chemicals in there. And then literally, like, they build up the pressure to get it to start flowing. Once it starts flowing, all that fracking fluid comes back out along with the oil and the natural gas. So they recover it and reuse it in the next fracking system. So um, so that's how they kind of, like, the production works is the, the leasing. Now, here's what Biden has done to 
Yep. Well, do you you guys all get how the the oils produce, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez, Rob, you okay? Yeah, I just broke my coffee cup again. That's twice in a row. <laughs> I get, I, 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 I'm trying to keep a better angle on the on the tablet since the tablet's the one that produces the best image that I've got right now. Yeah. And like, yeah, I just killed the second one in a row. Anyway. <laughs> My 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 poor coffee cups. Anyway, so you guys get how the 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 pr the production phase starts, right? Yeah, like how everything's yeah. produced. Okay, so what Biden did here, right off the bat, was he canceled leases on federal land, whereas the federal government is now owning, controlling, or putting some restriction on something like thirty five percent to fifty percent, depending on which state you're in, of the open. Uh, land that they can go and explore on so by restricting it on federal lands that literally like greatly diminishes uh where they can go and explore because then when you start looking at the other lands um like there ain't room for them to go and build a platform to explore on your backyard you know what i mean so anywhere where people live where they're cities they're not going to be able to look there you know, and it just kind of like extrapolates from there. Um, the next thing that he did is my, oh, well, so that's, that's the first part. They stopped giving the leases to use the land. They stopped giving leases for offshore areas because nobody owns the offshore except for the federal government. So they stopped issuing those leases. Now for the leases that they already have out there, well, how could they stop those? Hmm. Oh yeah, you still have to get the permit to actually build the drilling platform like the one sitting behind brian there so nice picture you got a good so um what they what they actually do when they uh set up an oil well is they build a big concrete platform and then everything is sealed to that platform so in the event that there is some sort of spill like uh there was in 1910 in california or some of the spilling of the oil wells in the gulf war those are a couple of the biggest um uh upstream disasters um when it happens now it's mostly ca captured and contained on the platform and then when they're done using the site they plug the hole remove the platform and you can never tell there was an oil wall there yeah uh, for right after they move it you see the marks in the grass but that's about it exactly so um but the federal government and the left state governments are refusing to issue those building permits that they need in order to do the exploration and to do the drilling. So, as you can imagine, um, there's a li there's limited oil in each of these pockets of oil that they get. Like we've got tons and tons of pockets, but they're not like under half the country. They're small pockets. Well, and so right. when they, I'm yeah. sorry, talking about leases, real quick, just just real quick, just to show an example. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, Biden, President Biden's Interior Department leased 126,228 acres for drilling through August 20th, his first 19 months in office. Uh, other presidents since Richard Nixon in 1969-97 leased over out fewer than 444.4 million acres at this stage in the first term. 4.4 million. He's leased less land in his in this in his term this far in his term than we have since World War II. Yeah. And that's just leases. That's just leases. Now the, yeah, but the point is, the oil companies are going to stop leasing because they're not issuing any of the permits. So yeah. uh, pull pull up the number of permits issued. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's down. Just, that's where he's really getting them. But I'm well, just saying... A lot of those leases weren't... Well, a lot of those leases weren't they uh, handed out in from from the previous administration as well? Yeah, Trump is, Trump is the one that told us the leases. They just issued the leases before they figured out how to stop issuing leases. Right. Oh, just so you know, Rob, 97% uh, of the fluid for fracking is water. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, my, my off-the-top knowledge of the process is fairly decent. Oh, yeah, you were only off by 2%. 
No, I wasn't so, trying to. I wasn't trying to admonish you. I was just looking at it. And I was like, oh, he's he was off. Oh no, 2%. no, I, I I I appreciate it. Did you did you get the full breakdown? What was the uh, the so the, the, the chemical well, the chemicals that were used? Different chemicals are added for different purposes based on the rock type and other specifics of a fracking site. Acids, for example, are used to dissolve minerals to help fossil fuels flow flow more easily. Biocides eliminate bacteria. Gelling agents help carry uh pro propents into fractures and corrosion inhibitors prevent steel parts of the well from being damaged by fracking fluid. The EPA identified 1,084 different chemicals reported as used in fracking formulas between 2005 and 2013. Common ingredients include methanol, ethylene glycol, and prop 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 propagil Alcohol, those chemicals, along with many others used in fracking fluid, are considered hazardous to human health. Meanwhile, and perhaps more disconcertingly, the potential for human health impacts of the majority of chemicals used in fracking formulas are simply unknown. For instance, uh, for instance, scientists... But still California less chemicals found, than, say, puffing on some hot smoke. Eh, I, well, uh, ethylene glycol is what you use in... Uh, <laughs> your engines uh antifreeze or coolant so yeah i mean man. yeah well i thought it was glycol funny. is like mostly a sugar-based substance so when we get to midstream it's funny but a lot of those uh chemicals that you're talking about they're um fossil fuel products no oh, almost everything that we use in our day-to-day -day. okay you take these idiots that are uh, throwing tomato soup and mashed potatoes on the Monet paintings and stuff while super gluing their hands to the wall. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because they're using super glue. They're using a chemical to glue themselves to a wall that wouldn't be there without fossil fuels. And then they're complaining about fossil fuels. You freaking idiots. Like every, they're stupid vests that they wear. Wouldn't be there without fossil fuels it's like but the painting's oil based bro <laughs> right where do you think that can came from you idiot yeah oh, what do you man. think that super glue is made where of do you, idiot where do you think the hair dye came from that you dyed your hair fucking blue came from you moron yeah where do you think the oil from the bus because god <laughs> knows you can't buy a car from the bus that you took to get there came from right <laughs> Everything, almost everything that we use in our day to day lives, we wouldn't we wouldn't have without fossil fuels. Amen. Uh, hey, Rob. So as far as uh, and I'm the one with pastor next to my name, and mm -hmm. he's preaching. <laughs> <laughs> hey, permits. Uh, according to Energy Wire, uh, supposedly they say that Biden did a really good job his first year. He did he did more permits than Trump. His first year, which, which means what they he don't was say into, is that's private land, into, not federal. Yeah. Plus, those permits were the permits that had already been approved. He just issued them. Yeah. Now, they do say that from this year, it's plummeted. It went from 663 issued last April to 95 permits approved in January. Go ahead and produce that oil. I mean, I'm not going to let you do it, but go ahead and produce that oil, you yeah. greedy bastard. So, so new permits this year, when he's trying to get them to drill more, has gone way down to 95 permits so, on federal land. <laughs> okay, so my question is, how long is the permitting process? Does it say? Uh, I don't see anything yet. It just says so, the slowdown is unclear, but it comes as Biden administration officials. I've been pushing oil and gas industry to increase drilling. Okay, so the the two parts of it is the lease the lease sales, which the Biden administration stopped doing over a year ago, and then the permitting process, which you have to first have the lease, and then once you have the lease, it's something like a two year process. That's why I yeah. say like the first year of Biden, yeah, that was all Trump ramp ramping up production. So. Um, yeah, it's a joke. So yeah, they're uh, not going to tell you that. They're, they're not going to tell you. No, that. of course not. So um, anyway, so 
in the in in the upstream in the upstream process, like it's pretty much like straightforward. Even fracking, like basically, they're just trying to change the pressure under the ground so it will flow out, and then they remove the they remove something like ninety six percent, ninety seven percent of the fracking fluid because they don't want to have to make it again. They're going to recycle it and they reuse it. Um, and then they like fill it in with uh, a concrete slurry, concrete slurry that eventually is going to become solid and cap the, cap the hole. And like they pull off their platform. And once the platform's gone, you can never tell that there was a well there. Um, obviously, you can't cap a well quite like that for offshore purposes. And we've had some issues with offshore uh, production. But um, yeah, a couple of the big disasters have been from uh, offshore just because of the challenge there. Obviously, Deepwater Horizon was the the probably the most famous of that. And that's just, they knew there was problems and they didn't take care of the problems. Um, but um, in all of these processes, now here's the thing. So once you have the oil out of the ground, you have to get it to the refineries. Refineries need access to lots and lots of water, which when we start talking about midstream, you'll understand why they need lots of water. And the fossil fuels are, for the most part, nowhere near those coastlines where the refineries are being built. Although, I want to say it was China or something that was like converting like the equivalent of an aircraft carrier into a a floating refinery, which I find really interesting and for offshore drilling might be very, very effective. I just worry about a floating refinery. Um, well, they're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, refinery, refinery, you're right. Yeah. I was, I was thinking dr drilling side. I'm like, what? Yeah, the, the, the rigs oh, I don't oh, worry yeah. about, they actually have pretty good safety controls. Like when yeah. weather comes in and stuff, they're able to plug them up, like pull the uh pull the connection so like the wind's not whipping them around and busting the pipe and stuff like that um deep water horizon like worked because they saw pressures that they didn't think existed and they kept going like thinking it was gonna randomly go down and that's not what happened it blew up the whole rig um hey rob i love this line from ryan mcconaughey he's spokesperson for petroleum associates of wyoming he said the Biden administration has a <coughs> for federal development, delay, distract, and deflect. Yeah, that's what they do for everything, though. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it has to get to the refineries. So the two options are pipelines or trucks and tankers. So my background here is what you get when you use tankers to take oil to the refineries. Because what you're looking at behind me here, that's the Exxon Valdez oil spill, which happened because the tanker was on its way. It, it was actually at the end of an uh, at the end of a pipeline where it picked up the oil, which is kind of funny. No leaks along that whole pipeline. It gets to the truck to go and take it to the refineries in the Puget Sound region down in Washington. And what happens? So, increased in danger of ecological contamination by refusing to build pipelines. Um, they claim that pipelines disturb the nature. Brian, I like your backdrop there where there's a bunch of reindeer just chilling around the uh, caribou. pipeline. Caribou, there. Man. caribou. Those look like reindeer, you sure? Dude, caribou and reindeer are the same thing. But caribou <laughs> are, reindeer are domesticated. They're on farms, ranches. No, they are not. Caribou are wild. Caribou are wild. Oh, that. You don't know the difference between caribou and reindeer? Come on, bro. Now, it sounds suspect. <laughs> that's why, well, sounds, that's why sounds... Santa has reindeer and not caribou. They're the mm -hmm. same thing. It's just one is living on a ranch and the other one is wild. Um. So, uh... yeah, no, I've never heard, I've never heard of, uh, the reindeer on the Russian steppe because like yeah no I'm gonna need citation for that bullshit because I call bullshit oh, okay Rob whatever <laughs> I, I love you B but yeah I think you're a little full of shit on that one no um, hold on I'll, I'll end this one. right now <laughs> anyways the point is the animals obviously aren't being disturbed 
However, the Exxon Valdez oil spill killed millions of um, uh, wildlife. But if they just had a pipeline that went down the West Coast and got it to the refineries down in Washington, or if the federal government would uh, open up permitting for building more refineries and help. I mean, they're all about giving money to people. Why is this leftist federal government not uh, backing loans for the oil companies to put the billions of dollars into building new refineries? Well, so we can love, fast. Huh? The caribou love the oil oil drilling sites because it heats the ground around it a little bit that allows grass to grow deep into the winter which it normally wouldn't have and so they can eat and get food and they and warm up right around the drilling sites and okay you ready lines. you ready for uh -huh. this no uh -huh. reindeer rangifer tarandus in north america called caribou species huh. of deer family cervidae found in the Arctic tundra and adjacent boreal forests of Greenland, Scandinavia, Russia, Alaska, and Canada. Reindeer have been domesticated in Europe. There are two varieties or ecotypes, tundra okay, reindeer hold on, hold and on. forest okay. or woodland so, reindeer. So, but, from, but, but you got to the point. So, Brian, we're both wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. It has nothing to do with whether or not they're domesticated. Just I just didn't realize they're literally the same thing. I guess just like what I saw as caribou and what I saw as reindeer. They're probably just different subspecies well, of reindeer. His article but, just said they're domesticated. It, it, no, it said that, okay. Yeah, it said they have been it's, domesticated in Europe. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't say that reindeer are domesticated. Okay. It says they are the same thing, and then it says sometimes reindeer, also called caribou. No, okay. no, it says in, in North. It English, says in North in Alaska. No, no, I'm just saying reindeer are domesticated. It says in North America they're called caribou. Yeah, yes, they're called North caribou America, for a while. They're, they're reindeer. Yeah. They're domesticated. No. No, yes. no yes, it's, it saying, it it's saying in North America they're called caribou, but in the Arctic tundra and adjacent boreal forests of Greenland, Scandinavia, Scandinavia Russia, Alaska, but that's whatever. Reindeer have been, have been domesticated in Europe. There are two. Right. But no, no, no. Just read the beginning part first. Okay. In North America, reindeer comma in north america called caribou species end, right, of, there, right there right there species right there species of deer found in the arctic tundra and adjacent boreal forests of greenland scandinavia russia alaska and canada reindeer have been domesticated in europe have been domesticated in europe there are two varieties or ecotypes tundra reindeer and forest or woodland reindeer Tundra reindeer so the, migrate between tundra and okay. forest. So the articles, herds. the articles, the articles about reindeer, right? Or and caribou. they just happen to be called caribou in North. Okay, America. here we go. All right, let's. Uh, all right, was caribou in the wild. In here we go. America. Now, no, that is not what it says. It does not say that. Okay, at all, anywhere in there. Caribou. It says caribou have been domesticated. We just call them caribou in North America because we think we're fucking special here. Okay. <laughs> but they're reindeer. They're reindeer in the rest of the year. And it's like the standard <clears> system <throat> versus the metric system. We think we're smarter than 99% of the countries, but our shit usually stinks. Okay. National. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> National <Yeah>. Geographic kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love this conversation. This is awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's caribou it caribou are different. mammals that live in the northern regions of europe north america asia and greenland okay. when snow begins to fall caribou move south and travel to more sheltered climes where they can feed on moss or lichens the members of the deer family dig for blah blah, blah. this doesn't say anything about reindeer caribou but it, it also says uh yeah caribou. It says caribou have been domesticated no, it doesn't say they have been domesticated. <laughs> but the common name is caribou and in parentheses reindeer. Here, I'll... I'll... Yeah, it, I mean, it's the same thing. I got I got the point of the original article. Literally, if you are standing in, if you are standing in Russia, they're going to be called reindeer, whether they're wild or not. If you're standing in the North America, they're going to be called caribou. Rob, right here it says, in Europe, they are called reindeer. In North America, the animals are called caribou if they are wild, and reindeer if they are domesticated. Where? I'm looking at it right here on uh, the federal government website, Animal Healthy Literacy. 
Fun oh, fact for reindeer and caribou, right. FDA. According to the FDA, in North America, animals are called caribou if they're wild and reindeer if they're domesticated. In, in North America? America? That is in North America. In North America. That's part of the FDA. In North America, they're called reindeer if they're domesticated. Yes. In North America, the animals are called caribou if they are wild and reindeer if they are domesticated. Uh, but that's not anywhere else. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm that's North yeah. America. And I said, in Alaska, domesticated caribou are reindeer. Okay. In the wild, they are caribou. That's the difference between caribou and reindeer in Alaska. You know what? There's no difference. They're the same fucking thing. They are the same thing, but one's living on ranches behind fences, and the other one is running <laughs> around the tundra. <laughs> and okay, so unless you're in Russia, to, we're, oh, we're yes. gonna go up to we're gonna go up to Alaska, Brian. I'm gonna shoot a reindeer and a caribou, and then I'm gonna bring him to you, and you tell me which one's a reindeer, which one's a caribou. Well, he'll oh, know the because point he'll be is there. That they're the same creature, except one there we go, there wild, we go. and one is living on a ranch. <laughs> yeah, but after I shoot him, you're gonna tell me which one's which. Well, Rob, oh, you, but God. Rob, you said that he was. <laughs> you asked for the facts. You asked him for the. No, I got. I got brought it. it to you. Okay, I got it. So, but it, but again, right. like, and <laughs> I, and I got. The, and I got that point, but like I like I said, it's exactly like the metric system. Everywhere else in the world, it's a reindeer. <laughs> in the U.S., it's only a reindeer. If it's domesticated, if it's on a, it's yes. On a farm, yes. And I'm just I'm just going through. And all the rest of the world calls it a reindeer. I'm looking America's at special. I'm just going through the highlights on like 20 different sites here, and they're all saying. When it, when it comes to language the etymology, species. have you guys realized that the United States of America? Is the kid on the short bus? No, they're, because they're calling them caribou in Canada as well. So, yeah. but you know, yeah. I guess I guess they're Canada just is America's hat, so they're even dumber than America. So, <laughs> you know what they call them? In, you know what they call them in uh, Mexico? They don't call them anything because they're not there. Yeah. No, they 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 call them que. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> so back is so back to the oil. Okay, so once the oil's out of the ground, off the rails. Mm -hmm. uh, never on this show. Um, but so Rob, anyway, so but, but Rob, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so this has nothing to do with caribou, but you were saying that. Okay, uh, but they don't use. You were saying that you were saying that pipelines don't leak. No, they oh, they do they leak, leak, but when they leak. Okay, in the top 10 disasters for oil spills, hold on, let me grab my uh, research. He's saying all, oil second. pipelines are way safer than the other alternatives of transportation. Okay, right, right. Well, Not I'm just saying, I got leak. the Keystone pipeline yeah. uh, leaked 383,000 gallons of oil in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. My thing is, I'm not, I'm not con really concerned about that because when I was in Iraq, there was literally rivers of oil, like literally on the side of the road, river, rivers of oil. And you know what they were doing with them? Just burying it and just yeah. burying it, just putting yeah, sand over it. Okay. So, so I'm not really here. concerned I'm gonna, about I'm... leak, leak oil leakages on land. I mean, it came from yeah. the ground. So it being on the ground isn't really going to hurt anything except for the wildlife that may be right. around there. So, but the problem oh, isn't the ground, and we'll get into that. Hold on. Oh, so, yeah, real just, quick, people are always complaining about leaking, and so now they're they're talking. They want to switch things from the safest way of transportation to you know the less secure. Right. Okay. So, Brad, uh, how many gallons did you say that was? Those were the Keystone pipeline leaked uh, three hundred eighty three thousand gallons of oil in North okay, Dakota. Okay, great. So, nineteen ten in California. The Lakeview well uh, oil spill spilled 378 million gallons. To this Holy day, it shit. still remains the largest oil spill ever, and that was on a land well. During the Persian Gulf War, 240 million of, uh, gallons of oil were spilled in the desert. Did you just Number three. The toilet? No, uh, <laughs> by, uh, uh, a scooter went by. Uh, Deepwater Horizon in 2010, 210 million gallons. Wow, so, that's not, so the pipeline leak, your point is the pipelines aren't leaking nearly as much as what it takes uh, not to the non-traditional yeah. way of transporting the oil. I got gotcha. you. Not even close. So um, and how much money did it, how much money did it cost to, 
to fix those disasters. Oh, millions. Mill each, well, each and time, obviously. Later ones, yeah, the later ones, billions. It costed something like $8 billion to clean up the uh, Deepwater Horizon because that was an, uh, an offshore platform. Okay. Um, and the fight and and the funny thing is is that oh they ended up shocked that the actual marine life actually ended up eating the oil because they were putting their uh their biologically uh designed or their their scientifically designed bacteria that eats oil on it and um the oil disappeared in something like a quarter of the time that it should have taken because it was getting apparently eaten. earth knows how to take care of its own freaking oil That's anyway weird. yeah um, like some Valdez over seven billion. Let's see how. Yeah. So, uh, Ixtoc oil well was 140 million gallons. Uh, the Atlantic Empress. This is uh two two uh two tankers glided, 88.3 million. Uh, Castillo de uh, Belver 79 million <laughs> gallons. That was again a ship. Um. Oh, by the way, you know what a great alternative is to sending stuff by ship. Freaking pipelines. Um, no. The, the Moco Cadiz, 69 million gallons. Uh, Motor Tanker Haven, 45 million gallons. Torrey Canyon, 36 million gallons. Now, you know why you haven't heard of any of those? Because they happen all around Europe. And, uh, you know, America doesn't care about that. So you don't hear about that shit. Uh, yeah, and just like you, you don't to... hear about the massive rivers of oil in Iraq. Yeah, don't care about but that. it was like 240 million seconds. I know. Spill. Okay, so when the military is over here in America, we have to abide by strict refueling laws, right? Because of the EPA mm -hmm. and everything. Over yeah, in over Iraq, there, they don't bother, they just slop and go. Well, yeah, when I was over in Iraq, we just had a tarp laid down and you just filled up. If you spilled anything on the ground, you didn't have to clean it up, you just left it there. Whatever. Who cares? No one cares. <laughs> Made, so I'm sitting there going, we're worried about the environment. In, in america but we don't care about the environment over here what good does us do what good does it do us to worry about this over in america when we're over here in iraq and nobody gives a shit not even not even america gave a shit you would think that if we were america and we were on these forward operating bases we would treat that land as if it was united states okay. soil. Uh, on the flip side as you being one of our soldiers out there I'd rather you not get shot while cleaning up a uh, gasoline spill. I, I'm glad. That well, they right. But no, are we, I understand like out in the field, but on our forward operating bases, mm -hmm. we're, we're mostly secure. I mean, we have, we had uh, gate guards and shit, just like as if you would on a, on a base. So there I would, I would expect us to operate like we operate at home. I'm pretty sure at the uh, embassy in Iraq, it wasn't like that, but the embassy, because the embassy, the U.S. embassy in Iraq was considered U.S. US. And yeah. that's why you would be able to go there and they'd have fucking Jack Daniels and all, all kinds of uh, beer and shit like, uh, uh, oh, man. What's that? Heineken. Okay, so, you, so you couldn't have beer uh, as you're uh, out in the field in Iraq? No. You mean couldn't have, you mean couldn't, couldn't have we alcohol? There, couldn't have anything. We, we, we were there fighting in uh, countries that aren't free countries and still aren't free countries. Oh, okay, that's shocking. Anyway, so then, uh, dude, just pointing you out can that, you can get a tablet holder on Amazon for pretty cheap. They sell them to anybody. No, I have it. The angle is just uh, too shallow, so I'm like keeping it leaned up. <laughs> well, I'm just like, saying like, they, they yeah. have they have things that'll. You know, so you don't have to worry about it falling. Yeah, but the angle is too far forward or is too far back. So it's going to like catch the top of my head and nothing else unless I hold the tablet. Like I have a holder, like the angle is just too big. Well, you know, they make adjustable ones that they sell on Amazon to literally anybody. Yes. And how many <laughs> Amazon delivers or deliveries are delivered to the Philippines? None. I don't anyway, know. They have drones. I just discovered last week that this thing works better than the computer does for my. Uh, I know. I'm just giving you like shit, that. bro. God, put on yeah, your thick well, skin coat. Layered on thin. So number <laughs> ten, number ten on the biggest oil spills was, of course, the Exxon Valdez, which is probably the most famous one in the U.S. People can name it more than the Deepwater Horizon. 
Yeah, number 10 two, being the lowest. 20 the times. Of, mm-hmm. That one being the least amount of oil that was spilled? No, it's not the least. It's number 10 of the top 10. So it's not the worst. No, no, the worst was right. Oh, okay, yes, that's what that's, those 10. that's what the worst was. was 378 million gallons that uh created a, a geyser of oil pump, pumping out of the ground in California in 1910. 378 million gallons. Second place was the Gulf War at 240 million. Okay. Like, imagine you saw how much oil there was there, mm-hmm. and that one well exploding in California in 1910 was worse. Right. Almost twice as bad. Right. So really, the Keystone Pipeline that everybody throws a fit about the leak in North Dakota was abysmal compared even yeah, to the Exxon like, Valdez. It, 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 yeah. It we, we're, we're not even talking. Was, the reality is probably more oil leaks off of cars every day yeah. than leaked out of that pipeline. Right, yeah. right. Like okay. that's the reality. Right. So, um, but that's why that's why I covered this because notice in these top ten disasters, the wells are actually safe. If a uh, if 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 one of the wells starts having a leak, it causes a pressure change that they're going to instantly notice. Shut it off. Yeah. And shut it off. So a little bit may still escape in the time that it takes. I mean, just like shutting off the hose, a little bit of water still comes out. Right. Um. But like it's far safer than trying to transport it. Um, and then there's also transportation by truck, transportation by train. Um, I, I'm pretty sure those all three of those methods, tanker, truck, and uh, train, don't they also burn fossil fuels? Well, let's see. Just the saying. trains, trains have trains mm, are what they're generally diesel. diesel. Well, that they're diesel generators. They use electricity, but the I think they're working on changing them over to electrical. But then they get their power from diesel uh, 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 power plants. Well, they they can't change them over to electrical unless they have the entire uh, yeah, tracks lined with power lines, and they're nowhere near. Oh, but how are they gonna how are they gonna move all that steel and that wood and that cable to run the power lines yeah. uh, directly over the train tracks for the? Uh, oh no, they're they're working on doing battery. For trains, they, they yeah, it'll never work. We do not have a battery that can carry enough power to move a uh, train five feet. I dude, I'm not arguing with you about it. I'm just telling you like, that that's what they're working on. They 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 can work on it all they want. I can I I can work on work on going like this and having a billion dollars pop into my hand. <laughs> I'm working on, on the it. same page with I'm this. Working stuff, on being dude. a billionaire. <laughs> All three of us are on the same page with this, man. And yeah, we could, still working? We I really still, want it to work. We can and still, anyone who's buying an electric vehicle to save the environment is delusional. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, what do you, the fact of the matter is, is those elect, whatever. Like Rob says, we don't even have the capacity to store the energy, let alone get it out there. Even if we, even if we could produce the energy out of, uh, natural resources or renewable energy. We, we have no way that. of storing it, and the storage capacity that we have now is it's not equivalent to what we get from yeah. the fossil fuels. So, yeah, but so my, so my actual point on the transportation is yeah. we're making it harder to get the supplies to the refineries, and in the process, we're burning the already refined product to get it to the refineries when yeah. we could use zero fossil fuels getting it to the refineries in a much safer capacity by pipelines but the biden dumbass killed the keystone pipeline yeah <laughs> but then he went and gave russia their pipeline yeah of course and blew it up because and then blew- <laughs> <laughs> we don't we, we don't know that we don't Unless, know that yet if you Unless. believe that we blew it up <laughs> okay as much as I don't care about fuck YouTube, um, <laughs> we are getting the majority of our views on there. So let's not go right after their policies. <laughs> like if something slips, we'll try and get it by, but don't go right after it. <laughs> um, we, we will. Uh, later well, on, I just you later like on. going down there, Rob. <laughs> Now, when when we when we when we get to um when we get to doing like uh, uh, uh about uh, the capital F guy at the NIH, uh, 
I, and I'm perfectly fine with not saying him saying his name and just calling him capital F yeah. because I can think of another F that <clears throat> applies to him. Excuse me. Um, and uh, that whole uh, suck my big C uh, virus. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Clavicle? I don't. Yeah, yeah my clavicle. Clav- suck your clavicle. <laughs> yeah, there you suck go. Um, anyways, suck my clavicle, Frankie. That, when we get to talking about that, I'm literally gonna post it on Rumble so people can see the whole experience. And then during the whole the whole time that I'm uploading it, I'm gonna uh, record an an audio removed version, and it's gonna say if you want the audio, go to Spotify or uh, or Rumble or uh, Rumble. And we're actually going to talk about that DB, capital letter F. Frankie, Dr. Frankie. Everything we told. Yeah, Frankenstein, Fra- Frankenvirus, Dr. Frankenvirus. You can change your names, yeah. Dr. Frankenstein yeah. means. <laughs> Doc, yeah. Dr. Pouchy. Uh, he's got, he's got a little yeah, Barbie pouch. I think it's too close. Too close. He's got yeah, the Barbie too pouch. Too close. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Frankenvirus, I like that name for him. Anyways um so anyway so the so the whole pro so the pro- whole problem here is like it's harder and takes longer to get the oil to the refineries but they get they don't even have oil to get to the refineries because they stopped selling the leases and for the leases that they have they're not giving them permits so they can explore and once they do once they start exploring a spot if they're right and there's gas there it's still a one to two year process to get that oil out now there generally has to be financing because yes, there is big backside profit on oil. About fifty percent of what what they put in, they end up getting back out. Anyways, um, but on the front side, they have to finance that stuff because mm-hmm. yeah, I mean they, they just have to, and they spend billions of dollars employing people just to look for gas, and they might not find it. Right. So, uh, anyways, so all of this going so. In three different ways, the Biden administration has attacked the availability of the first phase of the oil industry, which is the upstream process. Now, when we get to the midstream process, pretty easy. We are talking about refining refining and processing. Okay. So do you know how we get the products out of oil that we actually use? It goes to the refinery. <laughs> it's Yeah, but do you know what it is? I do, but I can't. I, I mean, it's a still. I, there's it's a like, step by step. It it takes the oil and it boils it's a still. it. And... No, it's a still. It yeah, heats up right. the, it, it it heats up the crude oil, mm-hmm. and in the distillation chamber, like the lighter gases like um, butane floats at the top, mm-hmm. then gasoline, then diesel and jet fuel, and um, it starts separating them out. At higher temperatures so they raise the temperature raise the temperature raise the temperature so when people sit there and think oh my god look at all this pollution that this refinery is putting out it's, it's not pollution it's, it's steam. steam because they have giant furnaces heating up this yep. oil to the top level for making jet fuel it goes all the way up to something like 500 degrees or something like that to make the jet fuel oh oh like six seven hundred degrees for uh diesel and whatnot yeah and and, and and the the way it works is they get all of this product from the same oil. It just separates in the distillation process and the heavier elements are what becomes diesel and the lighter, the little bit lighter elements are jet fuel. And then the way lighter elements are like gasoline and butane. Mm-hmm. So, and that's how it works. And then that, and then that the heaviest parts get sent off and get turned into plastics. Right. Is that, other see, I know we went through this, whole thing about how they get gas and diesel and everything while i was in school learning the automotive technology so yeah i understand that part so. yeah so um but but i think most people don't understand how it's actually produced and that's literally right. it so when you see these refineries and it looks like they're polluting 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 these are actually like huge clouds of uh water vapor being released because they have to cool those uh uh cisterns down to inspect them before they reload them with the next batch of oil just like you would have to uh clean your uh pans before you cook in them again you know what i mean mm-hmm. and in order in order to clean and inspect them they have to cool them down and when you put water to heat it makes steam 
That's what you're seeing coming out of the refineries. It's not smoke. It's steam. Now, um, the the chemically smell that you smell when you're near uh, petrochemical plants aren't actually chemicals being released to the into the air. Ironically, what you're smelling is the oil that's just being stored, and that's what crude oil smells like. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, because the oil once it gets there, it's just stored in huge tanks. And if they're were if they're inspecting the inside of the tank to make sure that they're structurally sound, they have that tank open and the chemical smells go out. So, uh, and I'm sorry, I want the refineries to keep inspecting their storage tanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, because we don't need the to top. What was it? The Lakeview well. <laughs> Anyway, so 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 that process is like uh, is pretty straightforward. Now, because of the cooling process, they have to be near water, and they have to be able to get large amounts of oil into them, which means tankers have to be able to get to them, trains have to be able to get to them. So it kind of limits where they can build a refinery. Like, and then once the products are done, they have to be able to ship them out, which is why almost every refinery in the U.S. is on the Gulf Coast. Or on the Great Lakes. That's it. So right. uh, we, we go. we've got refinery. Yeah, we've got refinery, a bunch of refineries around the Puget Sound too. Um, and that process is something like what ninety percent, Brian? Ninety percent of the oil from Alaska is processed down there. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I... Hey, look, it's a uh, uh, that looks like a, a oil refining cistern. oil is superheated it becomes vapor the vapor is fed into the distillation unit as it rises and cools the vapor turns back into a liquid using stacks of trays the liquid is easily collected and separated by weight the lighter and medium weight liquids require less processing before they're ready to be used in cars and trucks the heavier liquids need more processing to become useful A process called cracking is used to maximize the usefulness of heavy oil. Heavy oil has long strings of carbon and hydrogen molecules. Using a catalyst, these molecules can be broken into smaller chains, transforming the heavy oil into lighter, more valuable fluids. Reforming is a process that increases the amount of gasoline produced from crude oil. One of the products separated in the distilling process is a liquid called naphtha. The number of carbon atoms in naphtha is about the same as the number found in gasoline, but their structure is more complex. Reforming rearranges the naphtha molecule, turning it into a usable gasoline-like molecule. Blending is a process of mixing different refinery products to make finished petroleum fuels. Gasoline, for example, is blended to achieve octane standards, creating the grades of gasoline you see at the pump, regular, mid-grade, and premium, that are necessary to meet the needs of specific engine types. Treating is a process used to produce cleaner gasoline, which helps protect both the environment and our health. Gasoline molecules contain impurities like sulfur that can be removed. When the molecules are heated and come in contact with a special catalyst, a chemical reaction occurs that strips the sulfur away. These sulfur compounds are used as fertilizers and in pharmaceuticals. Nothing goes to waste in a refinery. Boom. Stop it right there. That's all I need to see. <laughs> Especially that was like the perfect uh, spot to end on. Yeah. Nothing goes to waste in a refinery. Um, anyway, so 
like in this process, like you know how many permits the Biden administration has uh, uh, given for new refining capacity because we are near our refining capacity. That's why every storm like causes the prices to jack up because they can't refine. Um, know how many permits he's issued? Uh, hold on a second. A big round zero. No matter know how many oh. permits Trump issued. You know how many permits uh, Obama issued. You know how many permits uh, Bush in, issued. You know how many permits uh, Clinton issued. You know how many permits uh, the first Bush issued. You know how many, uh, you know, the last time that uh, permits were issued for that was under Reagan. The White House is pursuing new standards for particulate matter and ozone, likely tightening them to unachievable levels for much of the country and creating new barriers for energy project permits. Of course. So he's he's actively. Yeah, he's actively he's, attacking he's every actively aspect attack. of life. So we, I've got uh, 25 uh, Biden policies. uh 25 Biden policies raising gas prices and other energy costs. Hey, who permitted the uh, oil refinery that just opened up in Texas? Good question. Because there's one that just opened up this year. I want to say that thing has been under, uh, under uh, construction for like 20 years. Yeah, I don't know. So you're talking you're talking about the new one out in the energy uh the energy channel. It's in Channel or View, in Texas. Channel View. Uh yeah. I'm like energy channel. No, channel view. No um, new refineries in 29 years. So the last refinery to be completed in the United States, other than this one, was 1976. So this is the first one since 1976. And who permitted it? Uh, not That's seen that yet, but it it says no new refineries in 29 years. Uh, That's according to the according to the New York Times. So when did that one well, start being built? Because that would tell you <sighs> who. Uh... who... So. Yeah. Um, the one before that was in 1977 in Louisiana. Saudi Arabia owns the largest U.S. refinery in Texas. Port, Port oh, that's why they got a permit. Saudi Arabia owns it. Port Arthur. That's the one in Port Arthur. Oh. But let's see. The Motiva. That's the Motiva, the Motiva refinery in Port Arthur. And yeah, they just added to it. Um, let's see. I, I'm trying I'm trying to look when they actually broke ground on that. Funny that there's almost no the newest refinery now. with significant downstream unit capacity is in is Marathon's refinery in Garysville, Louisiana. The, that facility came online in 1977. Trump permitted it. <laughs> of course. Uh. So your, your zero for Trump was all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he permitted one refinery. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, they're all ignoring the capacity for refining. That was my point. Yeah, Joe, yeah, well, and so, it's under and it's under this stupid freaking assumption that we're saving we're, gonna, we're saving the planet. We're not saving anything. For that. Anyway, no. so now downstream, this is where uh, Biden is placing all the blame. Which is the point of sale? Gas stations make one cent per gallon of gas. 
up to 10 cents per gallon of gas. Gas stations selling the gas make less money on the gas than the federal government and the state government. No, basically Period. gas for gas stations is clickbait to get you to come in and buy it. drinks, sodas, whatever. Sometimes it's a loss leader. They, yeah. may, they, they make at this point, like, I mean, if you think about it as a percentage, if you got gas at five bucks, it's like 0.01% of their money they're actually getting back. If they have any spills or somebody managed to siphon some off or anything like that, they're making no profit on it. Literally, their profit margin when you go buy a fountain soda is like 60%. Their profit margin when you go buy a two liter of uh, Coke is like 43%. They don't make money off it. That's why you don't see very many gas stations anymore where they just sell gas because now gas is so expensive. They have to put so much money in to make any money that it's just almost not worth selling gas. That's why they have to have the attached stores. And they're being taxed as well for the gas. Yeah. Well, I mean, they get taxed on the profits at that point. But the the, the oil taxes that they collect, that's ahead of their price. Then they like tack in one cent, two cents, three cents. And like the way they have to compete and everything else. Um, I think it's something like 30% of the time. Um, they actually don't make as much as they paid for the gas. But right. it keeps people coming in so they make a profit. Right. It's it's a loss leader just like grocery stores do with meat. Or electronic stores with the game systems. And then they make all the profits on the games and the accessories. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, so, it's capitalism. Yeah. So what 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 now? Here's and, and here's the thing. So he points to the um, uh amount of money, the end result in dollars that the oil companies are making. Okay. But you don't look at economics by the end results of dollars, you look at percentages and whatnot. So if I put in 10 billion dollars and i'm only making back a million dollars a million dollars sounds like a, mon a lot of money but if i'm investing 10 billion dollars i need to get back a lot more than a million dollars you need to okay. get back 20 billion exactly so you look at you look at these oil companies and like he's like oh they're making 50 billion dollars this year okay great the oil prices are up inflation is up everything costs more but their capital that they have to invest to make that same money is also way up. So yes, they might have made 50 billion, but to make that 50 billion last year, it would have costed them a hundred billion investment to make that 50 billion. This year it cost them 400 billion of investment to make that 50 billion. Their margins are actually going down. Their profit percentages are actually going down because the total volume is going. But the way he's the prices have been manipulated, it looks like a bigger number because of the inflated price. Well, our money's worth half as much. So really in, you know, Trump years, uh, that 50 billion would have been 25 billion, which is pretty much in line with giant mega companies. Now, the the other part of it is these companies that he's like, oh, they're making billions and billions and billions of dollars. Okay, but Exxon Val Valdez sells trillions of dollars of gas. So if they made 500, or if they made $500 billion in profit off of selling, 500 trillion gallons of gas, they're still making a penny a gallon. And you just mean Exxon, not Exxon Valdez. Yeah, the Valdez yeah, is Exxon, what's behind yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be so I got it like, I just had it. But, but you, get what it, you get what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so the, it, what it looks like they're making in profit, it's off of volume, but actually like they're, they're as far as a company, like their profit margins are trash. You want to talk about some companies making some profits that are ridiculous? Go look at Facebook. Go look at Google. Go look at Amazon. Apple, go look at Samsung. Go look at Amazon. Go look at well, that Amazon's really the only retailer that makes good money. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, most of their money that they're making, they're not even making off of the uh, off of their uh, retail operations. And now they it's like the web services and yeah, their Amazon web services and their uh, digital content. Because, you know, so that was the reason I initially invested in Amazon because they were talking about digitizing every book. Yeah, that's why I was interested in Amazon and damn, have they done it. <laughs> so, and now they like try and get every independent writer writing on their platform. So it's pretty cool. They make it really easy for anybody to publish anything they want. 
as long so, as it, uh, as long as it doesn't go against their political views. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, Sometimes they do that too. It's just a pushback. That they well, I mean, get. Johnny the Johnny the Walrus is available on there, so like, yeah, but they tried to get it off. They tried to get it pushed off. No, liberals tried to get it. Pushed yeah, off. that's Amazon, what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Amazon doesn't push off anything that makes money. <laughs> yeah, Bezos no, that, that not be, to make money. What? That'd be stupid. Uh, Bezos has nothing to do with Amazon anymore. He's just. Oh, a I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So uh, he stepped down from being a real person, like a real person. He was <laughs> diddling his secretary or whatever that caused him to get a divorce. Anyway, so 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 the point is like what he's blaming is the downstream that has no control over the oil price and then destroying the upstream and the midstream. That's the reason why the price of oil is exploding. That's the reason why the price of heating your home is exploding. That's the reason why your life sucks because Biden has done everything he can to destroy the industry without going after the gas stations, which now he's like trying to go after the gas stations and they're not even ones to make money. And Saudi Arabia too. He's trying to go after that. I mean, we can, uh, that we can talk for hours shit, on that shit. I mean, he, by all What's means, it? he should be, he should be impeached by now with the shit that he's dealing with Saudi Arabia. The yeah. quid pro quo that they tried to get Trump for, which they're doing now, but it's okay because it's Biden and he's a fucking leftist. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you got it. So but his, but but his but his his uh being pissed off sort of Saudi Arabia is just because they didn't bow to his quid pro quo. Right. You know, and he was saying that that, that, that would the thing that Trump was, you know, yeah. It was going after his son, apparently. So that was that was the bad thing. Anyways, but yeah. Uh shit. <laughs> I forgot where I was going. <laughs> I pulled a Biden. <laughs> oh, 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 come on, man. Where we go? Where we go? Uh, I want to go over here. Sir, that's the forest. You can't go in there. <laughs> That's the dark forest. Yeah. <laughs> you got lost at the White House lawn. That's crazy. Dude, let's face it. If it wasn't for the Secret Service, <laughs> that dude would be a constantly on silver alert. Like, what the? Right. <laughs> anyway. Retirement home under so this, pro- this, might, this might not have been a, a, a particularly interesting show, but I thought it was important to do because most people don't understand how they get the gas in their car. Right. Well, and, and they don't we did... understand. They don't understand. People say, "Oh, Biden is hurting it," but they don't understand how. Well, how are they doing it? Because they're they're keeping them from having access to the land, so they can explore for the oil. They're restricting the exploration for the oil. They're restricting the getting the oil out. They're restricting the transportation of the oil. They're restricting the refining of the oil. And the only thing that they're not restricting is the sale of the oil. But they're accusing people that aren't making money of price gouging. Well, I mean, the fact is, Rob, they're they're taking one statistic. They're saying, "Well, leases are way up," but no, they're not. No, they're not. Talk, but they're not talking about they've shot down the permits, which they need to actually drill it on the lease. And lease. leases are not up. Man, I'm they're just not, reading. I'm just saying. I'm just that reading. Some... But the leases that are up are on private land, not federal. Yeah, I'm just reading something here that uh, really uh, it just caught my eye. Biden actually took money from the Navajo Nation. Here, look, this is what the uh, numbers three, four, five, six, and s- seven and eight for Biden's uh, uh, policies that uh, affected gas prices. The administration canceled the Keystone XL pipeline and suspended oil and gas leases in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and New Mexico, despite opposition from the Navajo Nation. It also resurrected the waters of the united states rule which would increase barriers to energy projects so all this talk about the you know the indigenous peoples that they care so much about they decided that they didn't care what the navajo nation wanted but they were gonna they were gonna uh stop producing oil on the wildlife refuges refuge in new mexico that's ridiculous. No, I didn't know that until I just read that. Yeah. Sounds exactly par for a leftist course. 
And this is americansforprosperity.org. Yeah. That I got it from. So, but anyways, <laughs> we did go off the rails. We went off the rails um a lot. on a on a different uh mammal. So, that's a positive. Reindeer. Uh, yep. Caribou. Uh, caribou. Reindeer. Caribou. <laughs> You know, it probably has to do with the fact that the, the only place I've actually ever actually seen reindeer was in places where they're called reindeer. Mm. Which is Alaska on ranches. Yeah, well, I mean, North Americans are kind of retarded. Look at if, went to a- if, you, if, 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 if you're going to debate me about how retarded Americans are, I will point you to our <laughs> Secretary <laughs> of Health and Human Services, and you can debate me on that. Uh, and then I will point you, because I will top you there, to uh the uh press secretary okay our current press secretary i think is uh, almost as bad as mind. the secretary of health top of mind. <laughs> uh, top of mind. well she has to read it directly off any script she has she can't go off the script see rob call, rob calls oh, your question she has to start oh, flipping through the yeah. paper to find her answer hold on rob, give me just rob calls him reindeer because he accidentally stumbled into a reindeer show <laughs> we almost made it two episodes we almost made it two episodes no, nobody said anything about the other uh mammal <laughs> I think brought up a new one baby here. Uh, <laughs> look at that nose you penetrate there. you with more than one horn <laughs> reindeer show oh, jesus christ brad <laughs> hey we gotta end the show on a good note hey and I'm in the. I'm. I'm giving and again, for the next, and again. For the new holidays. How do you like my uh, Christmas tree? That is an awesome Christmas tree. I was wondering why you decided to go away from the caribou reindeer, <laughs> which this is actually called a Christmas tree. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. If, if you look up oil Christmas tree, this is what pops up. And I knew that because my my father used to work on these with like it, Cameron Ironworks and stuff. It looks like the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it sure does cheap gas and oil yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh god rob oh, oh it's too mar- too early in the morning here when i uh record these i can't wait to get back stateside so i'm at least recording yep. at the same Oppos- time opposite are. time schedule because you're in the philippines yep yeah oh my god hopefully you'll yeah, be yeah, able it's... to take some breaks between deliveries so you're Which not going funny. through and picking up your orders which is funny. Oh, I, just I got up. it. Like the 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 rush is the rush is like over. Like and mm-hmm. then of course you know everything we intended was crumbled by bureaucracy. But I don't even want to talk about that. Which is funny because uh, Rob we'll and I both got up at the same time because I drive at night all night. And I yeah. go to bed in the morning. <laughs> so, so I literally boom. got up ten minutes before the show. <laughs> Friday night. Or were you we doing the. Choosing yeah, death. so fr- yeah, Friday Friday night, yeah, we'll definitely definitely uh we're gonna do the legacy of death. I wanted to do the um the watch parties every other episode. Uh, but for everybody, I am coming home, so I'm traveling next week. Uh so um we're gonna do two weeks in a row of the watch party and then it'll be a couple weeks before we do another one. But um yeah, we're gonna do Choosing Death, the legacy of Roe. There you go. Choosing death. That's a good title. Like, I love it. Like, bro, choosing, choosing to murder. You're coming home, not married. WTF. Don't, don't, don't even like bureaucracy. Were you supposed man, to be getting know. married like Sunday? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I, 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 I'm not going to talk about it on the show. We'll local just say bureaucracy, bureaucracy sucks. Hey, you think our yeah. bureaucracy is bad? Oh my God. Try local bureaucracy in the Philippines. Yeah, <laughs> and and, and, pay, and paperwork that you can't do anything about halfway around the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, one would think anyways. you'd get that figured out before you made the trip, but hey. hey let's oh, I did. On this. Let's I did. <laughs> and then, and see, that's why I don't want to get into it. It's a sore uh, subject. Let's not get started on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still pissed. Anyway, um, yeah, so... We'll do we'll do the we'll do it next we'll do the uh next uh watch party on Friday. So make sure to join us. Hopefully, um, you know, the big fat YT doesn't mess with us because they like held off the publishing of our video for like two days this time. Uh we've already got a um uh 
Is that what we had no views for? What? We already have one strike on our account uh, for talking about what a Supreme Court justice had to do or had to say with uh, the. Uh, no, uh, just, just that's it. That's all you got to say. Yeah. Just to, yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. don't get us another so, one for the same thing. Yeah. So based on what somebody else had to say, we were just directly quoting and we still got whacked. Um, Which for, is par uh, for the course of YouTube. Yeah, yeah, the 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 fuck YouTube. Um, <laughs> that that's my official name for him, the fuck YouTube. Um, anyways, so yeah, when we do when whenever we do content on that, it's going to be Rumble only content or Rumble Spotify only content when we cover those topics. But we know what the topics are, the topics that you can't discuss, the 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 virus that shall not be named. <laughs> Amen. We'll Sounds like a Harry it, Potter we'll, thing. <laughs> we'll 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 just call it the Voldemort from now on. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I just I I'm just like so irritated, just like watching like the the horrible thing about Biden. I'm I'm here in the Philippines right now. It's a third world country. Like they're a developing nation, but the amount of pain that Biden's decision making is causing here it is freaking ridiculous everything because like everything that they need here is going up in price because everything's on a global scale so like their cooking oil that they need to eat is going up the like i mean like you see people cooking with wood that they just go and start chopping down random coconut trees so they can get the wood to burn to cook um because they can't afford the the fuel gas because all the food's up because the transportation costs are up the fertilizer costs are up because of the restriction of oil supplies because biden's incompetent um so like i mean people talk about people in america hurting people yeah. here are starving because of biden's policies yeah. yeah and the left the left claims to be like compassionate no those, those dirty bastard people they're they're evil. They're all evil. They don't care how many people they hurt if it gets them their political points. Like, they're they're all evil. They're all evil. Every last one of them. Yeah. I don't think they think of it on a global scale either. I don't think they. But they, think but they, they say limited, that they do though. They have a very limited window of, of. No, they they don't think about past the money that the uh, green energy scammers put in their pocket. That's how far they think mm -hmm. about it. But they claim That's that it. they do. They claim that they're trying to save the planet but mm -hmm. they don't realize yeah. even the money that is printed the paper that the money is printed on is mm -hmm. brought to you in part by fossil fuels the ink that is used to <laughs> make the money yeah and 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 and, and uh you know joe biden was top of his class 75 out of 82 <clears throat> hey he's got three yeah. degrees yeah one mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and he he never plagiarized anybody. <laughs> the the British uh, the British uh, parliamentarian and uh, <clears throat> JFK and uh, <clears throat> Malcolm X and uh, <clears throat> just saying mm -hmm. never never. Yeah, so basically, how we fix this is everything that Biden undid and has done since he's been in office for the two years, two and a half, almost almost three years now needs no, to be years. undone we need to undo his undoings and undo his recent doings yeah no he was inaugurated in january of 2021 we're not even two years and he has done this level of destruction okay yeah right it's okay. god awful like god forbid what are we gonna look like in two years um so this is what the and, and this is this is my point even on this topic okay this is what congress have to has to do they have to, if when the Republicans take the House and the Senate, they have to write the laws to where it says X, Y, Z will happen or the president will go to prison. The end. Because otherwise he's just going to ignore the laws, just like he or, uh, ignores our border, border laws, just like he orders our deportation laws, just like he uh, ignores the court's uh, deportation orders. Like, he's not going to do anything that he's not forced to do. Um, so unless they make it, yeah, the president can go to jail for failing to follow this law. Unless they do that, I, I don't see anything changing. It's just going to keep getting worse. But Congress can say, uh, in, in, enter in, okay, um, 
like all land is available for uh, leases and like the president a, must issue this many leases and this um, not not even president must issue as of now all federal land is listed on a registry and they can open bid on the leases for that land take away the president take away the bureau bureaucratic the permitting unless they can prove true grounds to deny the permit permit applications are automatically approved in 30 days kind of like that kind of like your background checks for your uh weapons yeah if nothing came back it's approved uh, if nothing comes back in three days you can yep probably... and then if, if somebody if so if somebody wants to try and uh uh, stop it at that point then they're going to have to come up with good cause within 30 days so they're not going to be able to just like delay 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 which is what they did with keystone they delayed 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 until they got a democrat and they would kill it right so it wasn't about actual impact studies or any of that and during that about... in, and during those 30 days they should be able to carry on as if as if there was no reason I, I, not to. I'm I'm okay. Well, in the, in the process, like, no, I don't expect the company to start moving stuff out there because there may be a legitimate reason for the pit, permit to be denied. Like, if it safety. turns out that there, yeah, like safety issues. If there's actually geological instability in there, blah blah blah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that's why I say if there's a legitimate and Congress needs to detail what legitimate excuses for denying a permit are. Otherwise, they'll just like make shit up, right? So, but that—that's what that the 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 lawmakers they can run their mouths all they want, but they need to start putting boxes around the executive uh, branch because the executive branch is all the, under out of control. And then they also need to start stripping down, stripping down, and getting rid of all of these bureaucracies. We don't need an entire Department of Energy. We don't need an entire Department of Commerce. We that's, don't need an entire. That's what we have. That's what we have the legislature for. Yes, exactly. But what the legislatures have done is when they created these, they authorized them to make certain right. rule my, rulemaking. And in doing that, like the courts have been way too li liberal about allowing them to make rules when that's essentially lawmaking. And there is no at, at no place in the Constitution where it says people that weren't elected can make laws. So every single rule that's ever been written by a bureaucrat and not voted on, on in Congress needs to be thrown out. And that is a law that Congress can pass. All well, regulations not written by this body are null and void now and forever and will never be accepted. Which is that one law would open up the American economy like you would not believe. Well, and the Supreme Court just shot down that case with the EPA and yeah. said that no, you can't let the EPA make up rules because you yeah. don't want to. Yeah, they literally, so they literally have to, like, so, um, in the, in the EPA authorization, they give them the authorization to set the density of hard hats, the brightness level of reflective vests, the, you know what I mean? Yep. This has to, so they're saying, you have to have this, they will decide how effective it has to be. That's a rule setting. Mm -hmm. but saying oh you have to go and do this yeah that's not rule setting that's lawmaking and right. all of our bureaucracies do it um next up on the fbi simple if you're an fbi agent and you're caught giving any testimony in court that's not proven to be 100 percent true or in front of congress that's not proven to be 100 percent true you're fired and you'll be charged with uh perjury gee if that law was in place we wouldn't have the FISA court BS. We wouldn't have the uh, uh, Mar-a-Lago raid. We wouldn't have the Giuliani raid. We wouldn't have the raid on the guy from uh, Project My Pillow. Veritas. Huh? My Pillow, Mike Lindell. He My, got... Yeah, Mike Lindell. Like all, none of that stuff would have happened if the people giving the depositions, the cops. If you don't find your evidence, you're a liar, and you're going to jail. The same way. That it should be with like the the Me Too deal, or like okay, I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little, I'm a little softer on that. Well, I don't think all women should be believed, and you have to look at their character. Um, at the same time, 
like somebody being raped may not have actual evidence that they can back up. So no, I don't think you you have to be able to prove that the person is lying in order for them to be charged. But at the same time, you have to be able to prove the person committed rape. Okay, you here's, destroy their life. okay here's a better example. The red flag laws for red flag laws are purchase, just, yeah. for guns, right? Yeah. If you if you can't prove a good reason for someone to be Brian's looking you, for new topic. If I call what? if I if I call the cops on if I call a red flag on Rob and come to find out Rob has every right and mental capacity to own a firearm, then I should be the one to be punished, not Rob. Yeah, I, I you should be for you should be required to go break into my house. <laughs> guess how guess how that's gonna work out at my house mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in texas i can defend my castle and i shall defend my castle yeah <laughs> my my, oh, my, broke. my my daughter was not, my daughter's thinking about uh coming back down to texas and uh and she was talking about like because now she's decided she likes boys again funny how that whole phase ended up like passing took about eight years but she's no longer really transgender or like, she's not transgender she's not non-binary she's not bisexual she just likes boys now funny how that works that is awesome. weird uh anyways yeah let, let kids work it out and they'll sort it out um anyway um so she's looking at coming down and she's like, yeah, yeah. And I know all my boyfriends need to know about your sword. I'm like, sword, shit. I got guns now. <laughs> <laughs> my, best, guns. <laughs> my best friend's name is Desert Eagle 0. .50. <laughs> Smith & Wesson 38 Special Long Barrel. Makes you feel good like Dirty Harry. <laughs> so, Brian, what is your take? What's my take? Yeah, to close this out. I think the federal government needs to get out of the way and let the uh, let the private markets uh, do what it does best, and that's uh, develop and and grow and and build. Uh, I think the federal government gets too much in the way and blocks too much. Uh, that's what happens in Alaska on just about every project. The federal government and the pro and the environmentalists constantly get in the way to block everything that they don't like, and and then. When they finally oh get my through God. all the hoops, then when they finally get through all the hoops that they put in place, then they they throw in more, and have you go back and do the ones that you've already done. Uh, I think oil pipelines is the best way to transport oil because it's the safest, uh, cleanest way to do it. And I think by blocking the oil pipelines, they're just making things worse. They're trying to protect the. They say they're trying to protect the environment, but they're making it worse by making them transport it by train, by truck, by boat, by whatever, instead of by the pipeline itself. Increasing the likelihood of spills and the burning of fossil fuels. Yeah, and then you can employ employ more people, so you'll see the unemployment rate drop too. Yeah, and too many people. I I hate how uh, government or you know politicians pick one little fact and say, "See, we've done this," so we're not in the way we're trying to make it better but they don't point to all the other 300 facts that of what they're doing to block what they've already done so yeah. this is this is democrat help you need a dollar 25 to buy something you ask me for a quarter because you have a dollar i hand you the quarter but still the dollar out of your pocket and say i helped you yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah democrat logic all right, Brad, what about your uh, final thoughts on it? My final thoughts are, yeah, like like Brian was saying, you know, government, the federal government needs to get out of the way. Um, the EPA is BS. Um, oh, yeah. If you let the private industry take care of it, they're not going to, they're not going to, well, they shouldn't put their people in harm's way or the people around them in harm's way or or poison the people in that area which i mean i don't i don't know you, a, a lot of the jobs that biden has lost has been related to the fossil fuel industry mm -hmm. none of the jobs that have come back that he says they've created they've all came back because the economy was shut down uh self it was self induced and so when it came back online all our jobs should have came back 
and there was thousands of jobs that were lost due to the Keystone Pipeline shutdown. And all the jobs that they say that they have created are all jobs that have just come back. They have not added any jobs to the economy. So we need the government out of the way. We need to produce our own our own fossil fuels and our own energy. We need to become energy independent and a net exporter of energy. That way, nobody's reliant on Russia and we can make money off of sending energy elsewhere, just like the way that Trump had it. Well, Brad, like like you talked about jobs there for a second. I love how the government causes all the shutdowns, cuts all the businesses out. And then when they reopen the economy and, and let these jobs come back into effect, they say, hey, look at all the job growth we did. Right. Millions of the jobs. Like, uh, but those are jobs you had cut out and then brought back in when you opened up the market again. Right. And we're still, we're yeah. still, we still have less jobs now than we did yeah. before okay. the shutdown. Okay. So. Here we go. Well, it's not less anymore. Okay. Yeah. So uh, 2019, 2019, before the pandemic, we had 157 million jobs, right? 2020 it went down to 147 million. Then it went up to 152 million in 2022. And now it just, well, I mean, it's still an estimate, but the estimated final figure for the fiscal year is 158.28 million. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's the problem. Um, 2016, we had 150 million uh, over the course of four years. Uh, Trump grew that by uh, 6.1 million. So if we had gone from that point and added 6.1 million more, although it should actually be like 7 million because it's a percentage of the workforce. Anyways, if we grow by 7 million, we should be at 164 million. We're still short off of that 6 million jobs. Yeah, we're short six million jobs. There are six million people that should be working right now that aren't working. And a lot of that, and a lot of those jobs. How many of those jobs are people that have that are working two jobs now because they can't sustain their family with just one job? How about three or four <laughs> I, jobs? Yeah, but right. but that, but okay, but that's well, but and that's, then and well, hold on, and then not to mention what okay, about the people? What Democrat about the people? <laughs> what about the people that just don't want to work? Okay. Because in some so states, that, in some states, they're still giving them the COVID unemployment BS, which I don't understand how that's working out, but it is. Yeah, uh, that that's kind of the Democrat catfish. They like try and say that you know the the job numbers are uh, people working multiple jobs. No, one employed person counts as one employed person, whether you have one job or four jobs. Yeah. But what they do like to what they do like to. Um, yeah. Uh, say is, oh, our employment rates are uh, low. No, un the unemployment rate is purely the number of people that are receiving unemployment benefits right. as a percentage of the workers in the workforce. But if people stop being eligible and they stop looking for work because they've given up hope, they're not going to show up as unemployed because yeah. they don't receive unemployment checks. Right. Anyway, so my, my, fi my final wrap on this is... Um, Admiral uh, Poopy Pants uh, doesn't know a damn thing about the oil industry. He's taking the talking points from his leftist uh, anti-oil jerkwads to try and destroy the um, oil industry, just like he said he was going to do leading up to the election. It's exactly what he's done ever since he's gotten in the office. And he does exactly what he does with everything. He screws everything up and blames everything on everybody else. So he's never going to own up to the fact that he's the one doing all the damage. But when the prices go down, he wants to take the credit. Well, of course. He takes credit for everything, but he won't. He take takes the credit for everything for positive. Yeah. He'll take credit, <clears throat> but he's not taking blame. Right. So, I mean, the, the funny thing is, if you could spin it, it, like, if you were to go in and do an interview with Joe Biden, if you want the truth out of Joe Biden, be like, wow, Joe. I, I find it fascinating. It looks like that you've like really like done a great job, like reducing the number of permits. So you reduce our uh, dependence on fossil fuel, haven't you? Yeah, 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 I did that, I did that. Oh, you've really did a great job limiting the transportation of oil and getting rid of pipelines, uh, like helping get us off fossil fuels. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You're really working harder in this transition, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you, oh, number one. Uh, that's doubled the price of gas. Uh, 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 it's Putin's fault. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's soon, Joe Biden. Soon it'll be Saudi Arabia, and then it'll be Venezuela. Yeah. He's, he keeps trying to beg from these socialist communist countries. Oh, oh, by the way, you guys noticed this $1 trillion infrastructure bill? Wow, our infrastructure is still crumbling. Mm-hmm. Just like their socialist buddies down there in Venezuela who can no longer pump more oil because their infrastructure is so bad they don't have the capacity to pump oil anymore. That's what you get when socialists are in charge. Mm-hmm. Anyway, revelers, Thank you for joining the show. We're always glad to have you. Uh, we went off the rails a little bit here and there, but yeah, actually, it's not too bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's never bad for us. Our show is called Off the Rails. Yeah, no, I'm ju- I'm just saying this off was actually uh, this this was a pretty short detour for us. We usually go way off the rails. Uh, anyway, well, we uh, went into a whole definition of caribou and reindeer for crying <laughs> out loud, which I won. I yeah. won that one. Thank yes. you. Thank yes, you, you did, you. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it took you a while to get the, the proper Brian, information, but you did win that one. Brian, what are they called in Asia? Oh, hey, I was talking. I what, specifically I, I, said I, I, Alaska. I, 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 Thank you very much. No, you did not just, yes, I did. What do they call them in Asia? Huh? Reindeer. What What do they call uh-huh. them in Europe? Reindeer. Caribou. What do they call them in your little fantasy world where only 500,000 people live? In North sure. America, where there's how many millions of people? How many hundred? Okay, there's millions? there might be a million people where where caribou uh-huh. live in the uh-huh. entirety of North America. Okay, Rob, you're talking Keep the most partial populated land. land. Keep living uh-huh. in your fantasy <laughs> land. <laughs> Off the rails. Half, half the population of Alaska comes from out of state to fish in the drill oil. Anyway, uh, amen. Like, share, hide. subscribe. And if it was up comment. to the left, and if it was up to the left, there would be nobody living in Alaska because they'd want it to be a state, a, a federal park, or to send it back to Russia. Anyway, uh, like, share, so, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to hit that little notification bell. Yeah, Select all notifications. Subscribe. You can reach out to us again. It's uh, o t r r v l at yahoo.com. You can reach out to us directly now. Um, you can comment, uh, if you want to come on the show, if you want to like join us in this like train wreck that is our show, um, you're ab- absolutely welcome to go off the rails with us, uh, send us a message. Uh, we'd love to like have some other guests on here. We're having a hard time getting guests, uh, lined out. We get people who want to do the show and then they kind of, so, um, right now I'm actually like even trying to work on getting a Filipino congresswoman. So we'll see. Well, that's what happens when you get uh, confused lady boys <laughs> to say that they'll that they want to take part. Oh, uh, next time I'll just try and interview the donkey. Anyway, so thank you very much. oh, oh the this time it was <laughs> see, I knew it. Rob got the donkey, and it was Rob this time. God damn it! I say we just. I say we. I say we nuke all the donkeys. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. What is? The um, pictographic representation for the Democrat Party. Uh, jackass. Donkey. The jackass. <laughs> the jackass. We could uh, ask Ron DeSantis. That would be the cool. Rob. Anyway, what? <laughs> it's a oh. Rob. <laughs> it's a Rob. <laughs> oh Jesus. Um, yeah. All right, let's close this out, and then we can bullshit guy. on the. Cool. Um, uh, so yeah, so make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Uh, we're working on trying to make the content better. We're trying to get the conversations better. We're trying to figure out all the other platforms. Wherever you are, make sure you give us a like. Make sure you give us a subscribe. Make sure that you follow us, uh, so you know when we're putting stuff up. And uh, you know, we're always trying to put up more stuff, come up with new stuff, and uh, hope you guys are uh, continue to enjoy the show. Um, and we we're about to be uh, celebrating a landmark on uh, our views, so we'll talk about that on the next show. You guys yeah, have Brian, I hope that's the only thing that you lick on film. <laughs> hey, I got to vote. Come on, I, I got to vote. <laughs> what you mail in? Washington, in oh, Washington, yeah. you only do mail in. Yeah, you Washington's all in the mail in. Yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? So the only way you can vote is by the least 
safe, secure. Yeah. Secure. And the only way to vote in the state of Washington is for them to send you the ballot, you use it, and then you either mail it or drop it in a drop box. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's one of the worst wow. things I've ever seen in my life. I like going, I like actually going to the, uh, the you know, I would actually it. really love that if I was trying to cheat and wanted to fill out other people's ballots. I agree. Well, well, wait a minute, you guys. Oh, but there's a signature spot on it. It's got to be your signature on it. Nothing ever gets lost <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> ever. All right, guys. Yeah. Yeah, especially entire boxes from a uh, uh, right leaning districts getting dumped off on the side of the road, right? I that like, never happened. I like the last thing we do on the show is off the rails. <laughs> yeah, of course. Absolutely. You're yeah, the exactly. one that went and licked your envelope in front of everybody. You brought it up. Uh, well, you licked it. Dude, okay. And so, it tastes like crap. I don't know if you've watched many of the videos. <laughs> you were licking the wrong spot, dude. <laughs> Okay, so like so crap. Brian, I, I know what I know what you see flips between who's uh who's talking and who's not, but in the actual like broadcast, we are all three on screen the entire time. Just so you know, so yeah, we're gonna catch you licking whatever you're licking, whether you think the camera's pointed at you or not. Well, it makes so me stop. Think of, makes me think this, of Seinfeld with the one fiance who licks all the the. The uh, envelopes for her wedding invitations and dies because of the poison glue. Yeah, um, yeah. So stop practicing cunnilingus on your envelopes during the show, okay? <laughs> anyway, you guys, have good on you for voting. Thanks for joining us. Go Thanks, out guys. and vote. It's the eight. Vote. Go vote. 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 Eight. Go vote. Take five people to vote. Take ten people to vote. Take fifteen people to vote. And when you're done, take some more people to vote. Go vote. I had yes. to get smiley into office. Come on. And vote. vote R all the way down the line. <laughs> well, at least make sure there's no D's. Yeah. <laughs> Treat it like school. You don't want any D's. <laughs> <laughs> but they Although don't nowadays, I don't know that that's true. <laughs> they don't have R's in school, so. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> We're just not allowed to call them that. <laughs> <laughs> short bus joke short bus joke hey brad be careful brian identifies with that remark hey, hey, hey. Uh, all right anyway, guys you guys whose have name a good starts with an r whose name starts with an r huh oh, oh. oh. all right guys have a good night i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna stop the recording and we can keep going all right guys <laughs> have a good night thanks for watching Later.